Um, so we did all of seven three, and we can talk about the quiz later. All of seven three is done. And we started seven four, and we did letter C on number three, right? We are going to do A and B on letter or number three as well. We are going to skip all of number two for today. And then we are going to do number one in this section. So A and B in one. And then I do want to do number one and seven five. So we are going to start seven five. Like I said earlier, this graph step is not on the quiz. Everybody look at me. This is not on the quiz. Rational graphs is not on the quiz. I am not going to teach you number two. So do you think number two is going to be on the quiz? No. Probably not because you don't know it, right? But number one will be. So when we come back and do number one, we will go over that slowly. I am not assigning seven for homework. I'm actually going to use it in class as just a couple more practice problems. And then we will do this first problem, seven five. Seven five will not be on the quiz. Okay, so literally only seven three. And then this first problem, area of a triangle, those are the two types of problems or two places to look for a step that's gonna be on the quiz. Okay, so let's get going. Let's go graph our rational functions. Even though it's not on the quiz, we're still gonna practice it. Just a reminder, if you weren't here when we did the review, the biggest thing that you need to remember is just what to find and how to find it. So we need um, to care about intercepts, X and Y intercepts. We need to care about asymptotes, vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So what we are gonna do is use these, you know, math types and we are going to solve um, and we're gonna graph our equation. So I wanna do B first. I actually think it's the easier one and then we'll come back and do letter A. Yeah, this is important. So you do not have the sound, have it down. So um, what you need to do on letter B though, is you need to start by factoring. So can you factor that while I make sure that everybody has this down? And then if you haven't factored, then I want you to find vertical, horizontal asymptote, X and Y intercepts. And then I'll catch up in a second. <clears throat> yep, we're doing letter B. Letter B. <laughs> if exponents are equal, then we make a fraction of the coefficients. So if our exponents are equal, then we make a fraction of the coefficients. All right, so I'm coming up to letter B and I'm gonna do my work in like a box right about here, okay? Um, let's factor it down first. So I know that X squared plus six X plus five becomes X plus one X plus five. And then let me take a two out of all of these. I get X squared minus X minus two. And that becomes X minus two X plus one. X. X minus two and X plus two would. Um, no, I should have the two should be negative and the one should be positive, and I can't do two and two because I need to. Or right, wait, I guess if you did that, Seth, then you need a two X in one of the starters. Do you have like a two X plus two and then a no, X minus two? Okay, if you took that two out, then you have to have just a two in my like last part right here, so it can't be two and two as your factors. Do you see how X plus one is repeated? What does that become on my graph? A hole. a hole, very good. So we'll have a hole at X equals negative one momentarily. Um, we are going to find all the other pieces. So we're gonna find vertical asymptote is my um, simplified denominator. So I'm gonna do two times X minus two equals zero. So X equals two. my horizontal asymptote, my exponents are the same. So that means I just make a fraction of the coefficients. So my horizontal asymptote is at y equals one half. My x intercept is my numerator. Am I moving too fast? Are you guys good? Okay, good. 
I'm just I'm just rolling, so I did not even think about stopping. X plus five equals zero, so I'm going to say X equals negative five. And then Y intercept is where we plug zero in for all of my X's. So I essentially have zero plus five over two times zero minus two, which is going to be five over negative four. Great question. You see how they both have an exponent of two? So since the exponents match, the exponents are equal, then I make a fraction of the coefficients in front of x squared. You look at the leading coefficients, we make a fraction. So it's one over two. Say one more time. It's a whole, it's a whole now. Oh yeah, because it's a whole now. Yeah, so we're gonna put that down here. So I'm gonna say whole at x equals negative one. So let's go graph all of these things. I'm going to graph my asymptotes and my intercepts. That's close enough. Negative five over four is a little bit below negative one, and then I'm at negative five. And I've got a hole somewhere at negative one. I like to draw my curve first and then go and put a hole about where it should be right about there. And then remember the second C curve needs to go on the opposite side. So if I was in the bottom left, I need to go up to the top right now. All right, anybody, any questions? We doing okay on that one? Can we do another one? Can we go do an A? I'm gonna keep this up if you're still looking at this one and I want you to go graph A um, if you are done and ready to move on. Anybody questions yet? Can I move on to letter A? Okay, similar idea here. I can factor this down, but when I factor it down, it doesn't really help me because it's just going to be X minus two and, or X minus two, X plus two, and X minus three, X plus three. I cannot cancel anything out. So it's not super helpful to do that. Um, but if you wanna kind of do that in order to know what to do next, that's great. Um, I know the graph is going to be, just because I've already done this, I know that I'm going to have some graph up here. So I'm going to go do my work over here in this corner. So let's go down here and let's find all of our things. There's no hole here because I've got nothing to cancel, but I do a vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, x-intercept, y-intercepts. So vertical asymptote is my denominator. That's my x minus and plus 3 equals 0. So x equals plus or minus three. Yeah, go for it. Horizontal asymptote, I look at my um, coefficients or I look at my exponents and they are the same. So I do a fraction of my coefficients. So that's just gonna be y equals one.
X intercept is my numerator. X equals plus or minus two. And then my Y intercept is plug a zero in for everything. So I've got mm -hmm, four ninths, Oops. which is about a half. We, well, Y intercept, you plug zero in for the X's. So zero squared is gonna be zero. Zero minus four is negative four. Same thing on the bottom, zero minus negative nine is negative nine. So negative over a negative becomes a positive. So now we gotta go graph those. This one's gonna be a little bit funny because I've got two vertical asymptotes, one through positive three. One through negative three. My vertical as or my horizontal asymptote is through one. And then I've got all of my points are at X intercepts negative one and positive or negative two, positive two, Y intercept is at four A's. So this is kind of what I have set up. Everybody okay with that? That's just what our points have told us. This is kind of a funny graph. It's not like a C on one side and a C on the other side. Because I have essentially three sections that I need to graph this, this bottom one is going to be a parabola because it's still hugging the asymptotes. It's gonna look kind of parabolic down in the bottom, going through all the points that I said it was going to go through. And then on the, um, the other two columns, so like I've got nothing over here yet, I've got nothing over here. We draw little C's on the like opposite catty corner points to that. So if I graphed this par parabola down in the bottom, middle, then the top left and right both have little C's in them. I know that it's not physically marked for us. There's no points to know that, but that's the pattern. That's the way this graph looks. So if you have points somewhere, then we go like opposite that. If my parabola was in the top middle, then I would have my little C's in the bottom left, bottom right. Okay. Any questions? We'll do another one of these because I told you we're going to do our seven four homework kind of together. Um, so if you're done with this, we're going to jump up to 4.1 and we're going to do that one together. Four point, sorry, 4.7.4 number one. Sorry, lots of numbers. I always blame not being able to talk at the end of the day, but it's the beginning of the day and I still can't talk. So maybe it's a personal problem. I think I want my brain to work fast or my mouth to work as fast as my brain and it does not. All right, this type of problem will be on the quiz tomorrow. Everybody hear that? This will be on your quiz tomorrow. So first thing we need to do is we're gonna find the area of the triangle. Let's start by graphing this triangle. We're gonna graph this triangle out first. All right, so I'm going to go graph A at 1, negative 1. I'm going to go graph B at 3, 2. And I'm going to graph C at negative 1, 7. Okay. How are we doing so far? Good? Okay. Now, in order to find the area of a triangle, oh, I gotta zoom in or else it's gonna be trash. Area of a triangle, that is going to be equal to one half times the determinant of vector AB and vector AC. Now, I just said a word you don't know, right? Vector. Have we talked about vector in this class yet? No. I skipped the entire vector unit. We skipped all of vectors. Vectors are really not bad, but in vectors, there's polar coordinates, and those are tough. 
So we ran out of time. I decided that was not important, but I did think matrices was important. And this does deal with matrices. So I'm gonna teach you some very basics about um, vectors. Okay, vectors are essentially like a ray. It goes from like point A to point B. So if I'm doing vector of A, B, I'm going from A to B and I'm going to stop from A to B. And the name of this vector comes from its horizontal change and then it's vertical change. So I'm thinking, okay, how far left or right am I gonna go from A to get to B? And then from there, how far up or down am I gonna go from A to get to B? You can literally use your graph or I'll show you how to do it algebraically. So if I use my graph, I just jumped over one, two spots to get from A to B horizontally. You okay with that? Now I'm gonna jump up one, two, three spots to get to, from A to B. So my vector AB is going to be two comma three. We always do our change of X first, we do our change of Y second. If I were to have done this algebraically, I could go and look at my points A, B, and I would wanna do my, you can label them X1, Y1, X2, Y2. I wanna do my X2 minus my X1. So three minus one is three minus one, two. Yep. And then I can do two minus negative one is two minus negative one, three. Yep. So if you like to do it graphically, if you're a bit like more visual learner, you can do it graphically and just see how many jumps you do. Or if you're like, no, I gotta see like how logistically, like how do we algebraically get this? You can use this. So I did change of X and change of Y. Anybody in physics or know what that, like what this little triangle in front of my X is? Delta and Delta means change in, very good. So change in Delta X, Delta Y just means we're finding the difference in X's, finding the difference in Y's. We just have to start with the second one. We have to start with B and then go to A. So now let's do AC. Same idea. So vector AC, if my pen would write. Okay, so I'm gonna go my left or right distance from A to C. I went over two, but I went to the left one, two. So that means that I will have a negative two. Then I'm gonna go up from negative one to seven, which is eight spots. I'm not gonna do the little bumps, but that's eight spots. So my vector here will be negative two comma eight. Okay, thoughts, questions, concerns? Um, I'll let me show it to you algebraically. This time I'm gonna do my X2 and Y2 are gonna be the C. My pen could keep up, that'd be great. So I'm doing negative one minus one to get negative two and I'm doing seven minus negative one to get eight. Okay, this can be combined to be a two by two matrix. Two, three is my first row, negative two, eight is my second row. Did you do the determinant of that? Yeah, you guys have gotten pretty good at determinants. So I'm gonna do two times eight minus three times negative two. So 16 plus six is 22. That number gets to go in here. So my area is just one half of 22. And what's that gonna be? 11. You can throw a little unit squared on the back if you want, or you can just write 11, your paper. Okay, so the hardest part I think is the vector stuff because that's the new part. Once you have the vectors, you just do the determinant. We've been doing that for days. You can do one half of a number. You've been doing that since like, I don't know, middle school, elementary school. So that's pretty basic, but it's the, the vectors that's the hardest part. What I would love to do now is jump to your seven, four homework because I'm not gonna assign that. Let's use number one and number three as just extra practice problems, okay? 
We're not done with notes. I'm not going to sign seven four. Seven point four homework. We're going to do one and three together. We will come back to the notes because I do want to do one more problem, but while the seven four stuff is fresh in our head, let's jump to that. So let's go do the area of the triangle one first. So it says find the area of a triangle with vertices negative two one, two negative one, and one four. Can you graph that first? Thank you. All right, once you graph, I want you to find vector AB and vector BC, or AC, excuse me. We'll find the vectors so we can find the determinant. And then once you do that, yes, you can go ahead and do the determinant. Absolutely. I got four, negative two. I got negative two. That's what I'm saying. I got three, negative two. Okay, maybe I just Um, I got to go over as many as I can to go from A to B. So that's one, two, three, four spots. Um, I don't know yet. Give me one second. And then I went. Yeah, I mean, every spot you move, you have to count. That's right, Jaden. All right, AC, I got one, two, three. I think I got three, three. I think you did that wrong. So AC would have been like one minus negative two, which is three. I only had to bump over three spots. How come the uh, AB is negative two? Because I had to go down. To go from A to B, I had to go down. So that's why it's negative two. Were you going from B to A? Yeah, Okay, yep, you got to think about going from A to B, okay. I I like to subtract better because if you notice, I think a lot of the mistakes come from counting because it like seems like it's not the right scale. I would probably subtract. So I would do like one minus negative two, four minus one. And I would do, um, what is that? Two minus negative two and then negative one minus one. I think that's a safer bet. All right, once I have that, make those numbers into your little two by two matrix and do the determinant of that. I promise I'm trying my iPad and thing are not working well together today. So I'm trying to not write like trash and I know it looks like trash. I'd like to apologize. This is my formal apology. Thank you so much. We're still gonna do one half. Yep, so the determinant is 18. In order to really solve, we have to do one half of that. So area equals one half of 18. And what is one half of 18? Nine. Now we're getting all multilingual in here. 
I can't, I can't. Remember. All right, let's go do number three. Let's do one more example of a graph. Are the graphs like number three gonna be on your quiz tomorrow? No, no. Nope, but we should still know them. So let's practice them. Find your vertical asymptote, um, horizontal asymptote, x-intercept and y-intercept. If there's any holes, identify those, graph it. What was that? <laughs> Okay. We're just still on the homework, Jaden. Okay. Number three now. Because you don't know how to do number two. So. Yes. <laughs> All right, check your asymptotes and intercepts. because I plug a zero in for all my X's. So three times zero is zero plus six is six. And then zero minus one is negative one. So it's gonna be six divided by negative one, which is negative six. Let's go for it. Say again. Oh, Callie, you say something? Okay, let me graph it. All right, vertical asymptotes at one. Horizontals at three. X intercepts six. That's the Y intercept. That's embarrassing. X is only at negative two. Y is at six. Were there any holes in this graph? Nope. Nothing to factor. No holes. Say again? Yeah, it's at three. Yeah, it's really high up. Yeah. You can, but you can't factor anything out. Mm -hmm. Good question. All right, anybody questions on these? All right, let's go back to our notes. I want to do number one on seven five, and then we're going to be done for today. Number one on seven five. This is what we call a linear programming problem. And that's when we're ever dealing with maximums and minimums. And often we do minimizing cost because if you are in business, you know, you don't really want to spend a lot of money on anything. And we want to maximize profits, which means that we want to make a lot of money on what we're selling or what we're doing. So go to number one on 7.5. It's like a full page with kind of like a word problem at the top. Okay, so what we are gonna do is we are gonna take these words and we're gonna put them on this chart. Then we're gonna take this chart to make equations and then we're gonna take equations to graph it and we will find our answer where they intersect, okay? So let's start. It says Johnson's Produce is producing fertilizer with two nutrients, nitrogen and phosphorus. They need at least 180 units of nitrogen and 90 units of phosphorus. Okay, stop. Where in my chart would 180 go? Which element does that go with, nitrogen or phosphorus? Good, and is it A, B, or total? 
total. 180 goes in my total. Same thing with 90. We want at least a total of 90. And at least means that we can have more than that. So I can do greater than or less than right there because I can do greater than, I can have more than 180 or I could have more than 90, but I cannot have less than. I at least need that much. Okay. Then it says that we have two brands of fertilizers. Brand A costs $10 a bag and has four units of nitrogen and one unit of phosphorus. Okay. Brand A costs how much? 10. And how much nitrogen does it have? And how much phosphorus? One. Good. So brand A essentially is taking that first column. So I've got four things of nitrogen, one of phosphorus, $10 is cost. Is everyone okay with what boxes I'm plugging in? Brand B costs $5 and it's one um, unit of nitrogen, one unit of phosphate. So fill in your next box, five for your cost, and then one for both your nitrogen and phosphates. Okay, anybody questions or concerns so far? Okay, great. We are going to use these in a second, but we're gonna start by writing equations. The first two equations are always, always, always true for all of these graphs. They are going to be X is greater than or equal to zero and Y is greater than or equal to zero. We often forget those two because I already give you a graph that's in quadrant one, which means that there are no negatives, but we have to state that because can I have negative like amounts of brand A could I have negative cost? Could I have negative nitrogen? No, I can't have negative anything. So everything's gotta be positive. My next two equations are gonna come from the first two rows. So the first row is gonna be my first equation. Instead of writing A and B, let's write X and Y. So we're gonna say four times X plus one times Y is greater than or equal to 180. My second equation is going to be my phosphorus. So that was my nitrogen. I can even write a little N next to it to remind myself that's nitrogen. And my second one is phosphorus and that's gonna be X plus Y is less than or equal to 90. And then the last box is going to be my cost. It does say that we can't spend or we wanna have a budget of $800. I'm not going to include that because often we don't have anything here, but that's something we're going to keep in mind later. So for my cost, I'm going to write 10x plus 5y, and I can just say that equals c, that equals my cost. And that's what I want to maximize and minimize. All right, let's graph those two and let's see where we intersect. I think um, finding the intercepts is the easiest way to do it. So if I'm graphing the phosphorus one, what would my x intercept there be? If I plugged a, y, a zero in for y, what would my x be? 90. What would my y intercept be? 90, good. So I'm gonna go graph 90 on the x and y axis and let's do these by factors of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So I'm gonna graph 90 on my x 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I'm gonna graph 90 on my Y. It says greater than, so I can essentially shade everywhere outside of this. Shading is not that important though, so if you don't shade, that's okay. Shading is everything outside of there. Now, what's my Y intercept for the first equation, the nitrogen one? What would that Y intercept be? 180, good. And does anyone know what my X intercept would be? We'd have to do four X equals 180 and 180 divided by four is, I think 45. Am I moving too fast? Are you guys good with that? Mikey's like, sure. And then 180, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. All right, I graph these. I could also shade outside my pink guy, but that doesn't really matter. What I really care about is where do those two lines intersect at? How'd I do what? I graphed it so I knew that the y-intercept was 180 because if I plugged in a zero, 
for X, I would get Y equals 180. And then same thing to get my X intercept, you plug a zero in for Y. So four X equals 180. Divide by what four, you get 45. What point did they intersect at? We're gonna go X first. So X is 30, Y is 60. What does that mean? What does the answer 3060 mean? What'd you say? X equals 30. And what does X represent again? And like my word problem? Brand A. Brand A. So I should buy 30 units of brand A and 60 of brand B. The graph. That's fine. Where they intersect. We'll look at this on um, next class. You do not have homework. Um, and we will finish this and do some more practice next class. So let me stop.